Hello there, my name's Scott Kaplan. I've written a book called In Shape, In Love, Inspired. I've just uh, done a podcast with John North. He, uh, he asked me a, a bunch of questions. It was pretty friendly and conversational, actually, but uh, just touched on some of the, the topics in the book and, and some of the topics on life in general. John asked me about my background, how the book came about, um, and my experiences in writing the book, uh, how I felt during and after the process and before the process. So... Please um, tune into the podcast, have a little listen if you get a chance and, um, and take care. Thank you. Welcome to Volpanula podcast channel. Um, my very special guest today is Scott Capelin, who's a very interesting guy. And we've actually had a, a lot of a long sort of association in the last year and a half because he's been writing a book with us. So to dig into his bio a little bit, he's a personal trainer and life coach with a Bachelor of Commerce. So that's an interesting kind of mix. Um, Scott's had nine successful businesses over 16 years with extensive business mentoring experience and 20 years working with clients in the fitness industry and the wellness area. So by his own admission, Scott has also had a fair share of disappointment losing one business, his livelihood, his family home while his wife was pregnant with their third child and never gave up and worked until he got it back and within two years by the way too. So seeing his role as helping others help healthy, happy lifestyle through a balancing family fitness and finances. So welcome Scott to the show. That's a that's an interesting sort of backstory there. That's um and I think that's that's basically I think anybody um that's in business has never gone through it sailed through it in my opinion. I don't think I've ever come across anybody who's actually succeeded first time out of the gate. Yeah, yeah. I feel like my first ten years in business uh I had a pretty good run and I probably thought it was a bit too easy or maybe mm -hmm. I hadn't learned some hard lessons. So um, yeah, had a tough one there, but pretty grateful it happened actually at the end of it all. It's funny, isn't it? Like it's, it, I had the same situation. Like I, I went into a second business, first came to Sydney and we went really well for about five or six years. And then, then we actually got attacked by our own supplier, would you believe? And mm. ended up with a seven year war. And so it's, it's what you don't think about that gets you, not what you think about in, in business, I think, is what you, know, you don't realise is coming at you. Um, yeah. It catches off the side wall without realising it. So um, yeah, I think you've always got to be alert to it. I think, I think just because you think you've made it doesn't mean you have. Yeah. Oh, that's right. But I, I mean, I do love business and I, I love health and fitness, but I, I also am very passionate about having a lifestyle and, um, and I, I, I feel that business is the vehicle to have the life you want. It, it's not necessarily the means and, um, you know, an end unto itself, but, uh, yeah, when I had a, a, a business rough patch, I, I remember I had to speak to. I was speaking to somebody in the business sector and um, I said, oh, you know, oh, I remember being, you know, quite almost self-conscious about saying it, it wasn't a business problem, you know, it was a, it, it was a people issue. And, and this experienced business person looked at me and shook their head and, and they said, it always is. <laughs> so um, I was trying to make out that, you know, I know what I'm doing business wise, but a bit like your situation, you know, it, it's a, a people thing, you know, a, a clash and, but it's made me very cautious or wary or just protective, not so much of myself, but of, of other people too, going into business. I've done a lot of business mentoring. I'm in the process of franchising. And, you know, these franchise partners that we call them or franchisees, you've got to be super careful. A lot of these people are putting a lot of money into it. Or yeah. It could be life savings. And, um, you know, you just want to make sure they can look back in five years and say it, it was the best decision they ever made. And that's interesting because when you talk about franchising is that one of the things that you've got to do in your own business when you do that is you've got to be, you've got to document a lot of stuff and do a lot of things to be franchise ready in the first place. So the oh, it's an incredibly regulated sector and yeah. uh, you know, there's an organisation that has got me in a position to, to franchise. It's not just the franchise agreement, there's disclosure documents, there's the ACCC, the franchising code of conduct. You just, um, there's just nothing that's not, everything's transparent, which is a good thing. It's funny though, I think in some respects, like anybody can start a business tomorrow with no experience or no license or anything like that. And you've got to have a marriage, you've got a marriage license, right? You've got to get married. And yet there's no real formal qualifications to be to a business owner. And I think while that's a good thing in some respects, I think it's also a bad thing because a lot of these things that people make mistakes on along the way, they could have learned and been ready for it. And I think one of the important things about your book, and, and um, that's that's the copy there that we've got, um, is about there's more to business than just business too. Like there's also your, your personal life, your, your what they call the wheel of life, I guess. All those sort of things are all part of that big picture. So I think what people don't know when they go into business is that it's all consuming 
and if you if you're not careful, it will consume you, um, and catch you. And you know, obviously, it can make you sick. It can make you, you know, very stressed and stuff like that. So I think your book's an interesting book because it talks about that balance, but also coming from a business perspective as well because um, you, you're putting your experience in from that. So. What did you learn from writing the book, do you think? Like, at, you know, having gone through that book process, what do you think you learned about yourself? And Because a lot of people learn a lot of stuff when they write a book, I reckon. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, it was about a 16-month process. I thought it would be a three-month process, but not to suggest it's all that laborious. It, it's almost like I've got, I've got a friend in construction and he says that the last 10% of a project takes 90% of the time, you know, yeah. it was a bit like that with the book as well. And mm. the funny thing is, um, as that, you know, 12, 16 months unfolded, even my thoughts on things evolved and, uh, you want to make the book a real reflection of your beliefs. Um, I'm, I'm quite proud of the book, not even if the book actually goes nowhere like it's just an achievement it's something i really wanted to do for myself mm. um and it's a I'm, legacy right you, you basically it's a legacy, so, yeah mm. i'm happy with that so i mean just a, it's like completing a, a degree at university like a you know if you degree no degree who cares but it's just the completion of it i'm sort of big on completing things so happy you know and as the book sort of suggests if people get into it it I talk about support and teamwork and, you know, I had the support of, of you and even my wife, you know, like it's nothing. I think, um, who is it? Arnold Schwarzenegger says that, you know, he, he's not a self-made man. Nobody is. You need a little, a team. And yes. So um, yeah, I was really happy with the process, but yeah, just probably learned a lot about the challenges of writing a, a book. And, um, yeah, and just the things you don't realise, right? Because at the oh. end of the day, it's it's about it's a lot bigger than the like the finished product. So a lot of the things that was natural for us is that, and what most authors won't sort of do is that the the cover that and the way the book was going to be done was all laid out in advance. So it whereas most people write books tend to leave that to the last minute, and that's even though we probably dragged on a little bit finishing it, that's the important piece of the last puzzle is make sure that thing's ready to go. But we had a st- place to start from rather than having to then say, oh, we're going to call this book, what are we going to, what's it going to look like, what the covers look like. So that's a lot easier to roll out at the end. I've seen that yeah. take months just to get someone to agree to a cover. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. But, you know, that's saying that a lot of people don't know what they don't know, which mm. is why people would, you know, um, become a, a franchisee like my first business in 2005 I was a franchisee it was a, a, an amazing way to start I felt really supported um, I got to feel like the business was my own but I was also part of a network and and the franchisor he was also invested in my success so that was cool but yeah like writing a book I don't know what I don't know about writing a book I could start the right one but probably going to end up taking more time being a worse product and costing more rather mm-hmm. than find experts to help me yeah, and I think the thing is that having a nice finished product now means that you've got something to work with. So what, um, and I remember this conversation we had early on, and, and one of the things that was interesting we talked about, and we're kind of deviating in a bit of fitness and health here, was that, you know, originally with one of the terms of the book was I'm still, am I still fat or something like that was one of the titles we worked, and titles we worked on. And so tell me a little bit about the whole weight loss thing, because you, I know you went through this whole process of that, that sort of 40 plus year old guy that basically just can't lose that weight and and what the reasoning was behind that well back to the title i mean you know choosing a book title that's a big a big decision in, in itself um i suppose i didn't want to have a title that was too controversial although i do like people like mark manson and gordon ramsay mm-hmm. they, they stand out you know for a reason they are a bit polarizing um that's all well and good i can be polarizing but i just wanted something that you know, I have these businesses and, and our core values are things like inclusivity, um, being warm and friendly, um, no judgment, all that sort of thing. And my book needed to be a reflection on that. You know, I've worked in health and fitness for 20 odd years. And I suppose in that time, whether it be personal training, owning a gym, owning a boutique studio, we, we do consultations with every new member. In a consultation, you'll ask, what's your goal? You know, 95% of people have a weight loss goal. It could be two kilos five kilos, it could be 30 kilos, but it just it just seems that, you know, the majority of the population or at least the majority of people that start at a health club, they want to lose some kind of weight, get toned. It means the same thing. I want to lose body fat. Um, so I thought, you know, okay, weight loss is a pretty uh, big market. And um, 
And again, weight loss, it's, you know, there's a saying that weight loss is 70% nutrition and 30% exercise. It's, it's closer to 95% nutrition. So, and then you've got nutrition, which is a massive topic. It's personal. It's based on likes, preferences, dislikes, upbringing, religion, you know, so all sorts of things. So you, you can't really have a one size fits all approach. The book, my book goes in three stages in shape. That's the health and fitness component. There is a big nutrition piece on that, but it is pretty middle of the road. It's uh it's uh, what's the word? It's, it's it's more about principles and philosophies rather than a diet. It doesn't, you know, uh, endorse any one particular approach. And then getting deeper into the book, it becomes about um, being in love, which encompasses firstly loving the person that you are, you know, liking yourself, having a solid self-esteem, um, loving the life you live. Um, it does touch on intimate relationships and, and, and your partner, but it's not a book about relationship advice. Um, and the last part of the book, inspired again, living a life where you you know you enjoy getting up out of bed every day, going to do whatever you do, having things to look forward to, hobbies, passions, pursuits. So uh, yeah, I often think about the big rocks in life. You got your family, you got your fitness, you got your finances. Also known as um, you know career relationships and what I call goals or pursuits. But, uh, so yeah, but yeah, interesting thing with the title, I just. Um, <laughs> I think, I don't know, funny how titles come about. I think we just had a conversation one day and you said, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was quite funny because I think you already had that name in, your, in in the website or something like that, so it was like a natural thing. It's almost like you'd already thought it out. It just didn't didn't click. That's but right, I think yeah. the interesting thing, though, like it's it's like people like it, so come to you with weight loss, but you see there's a reason for it, right? So the reason why they're put on weight can be – something to do with relationships or something else is always connected together. I think people forget that. I mean, I had a guy who used to work for me and he was, a, he was a big man and he was fairly overweight and every lunchtime he'd go working out, like he'd come back and he looked like he'd been through, you know, the ringer backwards, right? And he'd done this for a year and he never lost a single, lost any weight. And then he left me and he went, and I saw him in the street about a year or so later and I said to him, he was skinny as a rake, right? It's like, man, what happened to you? Like, <laughs> And he said, oh, I went and did yoga. And I realized that then that point was, that's not what he was trying to fix the problem, but there was something else causing that. Maybe he was eating like a pig after, I don't know, or maybe he had, you know, problems at home, who knows? But I, it sort of realized it's all interconnected. It could be one of a number of things, you know, like a, even the book, um, a lot of people like to learn or through stories and examples, but the stories like that where, you know, people see a, I tell a story about a Chinese medicine doctor and he says, we've got so much yang in our lives, yang being, you know, stress, um, busy, time poor, we need more yin, you know. Um, he says a lot of people, when you exercise hard, you actually increase the stress hormone cortisol and and while you're trying to lose weight or do something for your wellness, it, you're actually making it worse. He says a lot of people are better <laughs> off having a bath or reading a book or just lying down and doing some deep breathing. So, I can sort of see how yoga would have helped the fellow you mentioned, but um, yeah, food can be emotional. It can be a crutch. It can fill a void. Um, but you know, we're not psychologists, but uh, they say that every behavior has a payoff and most behaviors mm -hmm. subconscious or unconscious. So, you know, why would an intelligent man who wants to lose weight eat the wrong foods, you know, and that's where yeah, it's, true. it's just, it's more than just a uh, physical habit, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, have it. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so yeah, that's a big, a big question. And that's what I've always enjoyed over the years, like helping people like that. And sometimes it can take, you know, two, three, six, 12 months to actually build enough trust and rapport to, to get some honesty out of someone to, to, to mm. make a change. Mm. And being honest with yourself, I suppose it's the hard part. <laughs> the, the hardest, yeah. <laughs> it's quite funny. I think I was talking to my son and we were watching something the other day on TV and he, he said something about, um, you know, they said, oh, stress is going to, you know, be, add to this. And so, yeah, stress adds to everything. <laughs> it's like whenever you, you whenever you go, like, the, the first thing the doctor asks is, are you stressed? And it's like, yeah. okay, let's work from there. So it's obviously something yeah. you'd want to avoid. And I think the biggest problem in society is that we're constantly stressed, Um well, we are, but we don't realise it. We don't acknowledge it. We think it's normal to be this busy. We think it's normal to, you know, live week to week financially. We think it's um, normal to have, you know, no time and to work and have two to four weeks off a year. It's, it's not normal. I think that last year the world's oldest man died in, in Japan. He was 120. And wow. before he died, they said, what's the key to longevity? He said, no stress. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and I think that's the biggest problem. And I think um, at the same time, it's like I, I remember a, a wise man once told me in business was probably the best piece of advice I ever had was when you wake up in the morning, ask yourself this one question, and that is, how can I work less and make more? Yeah. <laughs> question. But, you know, we're all, you know, what's the word? The the, the hustle, the, the drive, mm. the goal setting, the achievement, it's, it's, um, it's glorified. But, you know, the book also talks about personal values and stopping to identify those because, you know, <laughs> I know we're talking about the book, but I feel like I'm constantly talking about the book. It, you know, it talks about a guy who got to the end of his life and realised he'd done it all wrong. You know, like what a waste. What that's my biggest fear, I think. So just living in line with your values and just making sure you're on the right path all the time, um, and 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 not not sort of trying to work hard for the next twenty years to buy the freedom later. Trying to to do it now. Yeah, it was interesting. I was I, was, I interviewed a guy. A couple of months ago, where he was, a, he had read out a, the book of, of, of things that people regretted when they're on their deathbed, yeah. and it, you know, like ranked down. And one of them was I'd never really heard of before, and that was the question was allow yourself to be happy more. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Is that was that his book or was that a book? No, he said book? I can't even remember the name of the book now. But it's like the seven the dying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I've got a little piece of that in my book, literally, at the, the top five. It's from a, written by a nurse who spent a career in palliative care. You know, she right. spent spent decades talking to people on their last legs. So <laughs> what an eye opener. I, <laughs> yeah, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's the challenge, right, is that, you know, like, I remember a guy used to work for me, decided, oh, we did a merger and he ended up working less hours than I would have thought he was. And one of the things was that he said, that he didn't think that you, when you're deathbed, you wish you'd work more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nobody ever, nobody ever says, I wish I spent more time in the office. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he, he got the shock because his business partner had actually, um, back in the days of the faxes, his business partner had a heart attack, was in hospital, and he was checking his faxes. Really? And, um, he wow. said, I'm never going to get like that right. And yeah. um, and so he used to finish work at 5 o'clock and he didn't work overtime. But at the end of the day, when you're trying to launch a new business, you can't really work 9 to 5 either. I think there's uh, spurts in this thing. If you keep doing it for too long, then you've got to ask yourself the question, am I really getting anywhere with this thing or am I just, just beating myself up or is that yeah, spurt well, it's, time? It's a big decision business ownership. I mean, I wouldn't swap it for anything, but... Um you know, it, 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 I call it the illusion of freedom where you, you think you're free because you don't have a boss, but you're the one thinking about it at 2 a.m. on a Wednesday morning and, and you know, th- 4 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Mm. So, um, but no, I do think that, that you, can, you can achieve an income, you know, that you wouldn't normally. You can have a lifestyle that you couldn't have, you know, being an, an employee. But, you know, there's pros and cons and, it's, again, back to your values. And I think so. And I think at the end of the day, like, if you can – a balance your life a little bit and I don't think there's anything such such perfect as perfect life balance but I think awareness is the key like if you're not aware of what's going on and and you're completely immersed in a, in a business and you could end up you know losing everything else around you and, and well so. that's the thing with my career in fitness especially some of the more high-end services and health clubs where I've been in the box seat you know to dealing with these people who are who 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 can, do make a lot of money and and they could be on their fourth marriage or their third heart attack and you've got to ask yourself after a while what is success mm. is know, it really worth that <laughs> probably different for everyone you know so um you know success um but you know i talk about you know being happy that's sort of like surface level in the moment feeling then there's something deeper like being fulfilled or or being satisfied like um you know winning the rugby league premiership like it's 12 months of hard work, probably more, or the guy that climbs Mount Everest and not exactly happy when he's three quarters of the way up there, but how satisfying. And and then on a much deeper level, just being at peace, you know, because when you're at peace, things might be good, they might not be so good, but hey, mm. you're cool with it all. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's the biggest problem. I think the, the secret to happiness I read somewhere too was that, you know, humans aren't meant to be happy all the time because the re- reason for happiness is to drive you to do something. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, like, I'll be happy when I go do that. But the reality is once you've done it, you go, oh, okay, now I'll be happy when I get that. And it's just really just a yeah. brain trick and you end up actually getting off your bum. Well, it is, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why the key is to be happy on the way to that, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't just assume that I'll be happy when that yeah. happens because then when it does happen, um, you know, you're back to scratch again. Then you get a what's now. So it's almost like the journey, not the destination anyway. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So talk about... Um, if someone wants to get in touch with you and what you're doing now, so what's what's the next year look like for you? Like, what's your you're obviously franchising, so you're franchising the wellness or fitness business? Yep, yep, yep. It's funny because I've been business mentoring since 2008, and 
you know, I love it when somebody's got an idea to do a small business. That's what I specialize in, you know, um, you know, one to 10 employees and someone with a turnover anywhere between 200 grand and, you know, 5 million bucks where it's, um, it's really achievable, I, I, I suppose. Now, I never thought I'd be a franchisor. I've got a couple of franchisor sort of mm-hmm. friends and contacts and even experiences. And I thought, oh, you know, not really the position I see myself in, but it all sort of just, you know, sometimes I think in life, you know, you can have a goal and you can work really hard towards it and not achieve it or it crumbles. And it's like, oh gosh, you know, I couldn't have put any more thought planning or effort into that. And other times these amazing things come along in your life and you didn't even really try. So it's kind of like, well, gee, what's the point of goal setting? But I talk about that in the book as well. It's more like having an intention to provide some direction. Yeah. And, you know, um, there's a saying too from Wayne Dyer. He says, be open to everything and attached to nothing. So, mm-hmm. so, you know, you can't just, you know, from a law of attraction perspective, you can't just sit down on your lounge and say, I want $5 million to fall in my lap. You've got to take some action. Yeah. But um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I just I suppose through the creation of a small, a small business fitness studio business model that has become really successful and opening up a couple of those. And then I'm really passionate about helping people become business owners now they could be people who are in a corporate role they may not like they might be at a loose end with their career they might be passionate about health and fitness and not sure what to do with the next step and then ongoing from that making sure they meet their financial needs make sure make sure they meet their their lifestyle needs you know they could be in relationships they could be married they could have kids and you've got to you know that's again that's about the book the, the family the finances the finances give you freedom the family gives you the the fulfillment yeah and, um, and so I'm, I'm really keen to push forward with franchising both in Australia and overseas. Um, my wife and I, we have three daughters. Um, they're all under 10 years old and we would like to move to Bali next July for 12 months mm-hmm. and, um, and live there. My work is the kind of work I can do remotely. Our kids are in primary school. I'm thinking about the world's yeah. changed, isn't it, now? It's more accepting of the whole remote work than ever. Yeah, yeah. So we sort of been, not so I guess, forced into that, but... I mean, I've, with my work, I've had like 10 appointments a day for 20 years and I've just sort of moved myself away from that. Mm. Um, but, you know, like, is there ever a good time to spend a year abroad? Not really. But again, I don't want to be on my deathbed saying, oh, gosh, I, I wish I didn't, uh, you know, I, I wish I had done, done that. So we want to be all about experiences. My life, I like to be about trying things. I'm, I'm pretty happy if nine out of 10 things don't work because, um, you know, they say that it's not about... Uh, you know, the, I like the baseball analogy. The, the guys that hit the most home runs, they also get struck out the most. No, mm-hmm. no one talks about that. But <laughs> exactly. Yeah, or the or basketball player that, you know, doesn't score as many yeah. scores. Yeah, it's all that about... Like the Jordan yeah. ad where he's missed the winning shot, like, you know, mm. 212 times or something like that. But, uh, you know, he's also made it more than others. So, mm. yeah, that's it. The next... So I've sort of pretty much at peace with how I'm going to approach my business stuff. I've got a few businesses. I've got a couple of online businesses. And, um, yeah, I just like to keep myself mentally stimulated, uh, physically stimulated, always growing. That just means learning and trying new things. And, um, you know, ideally, like, my work, it helps people or makes their life a bit better. So Mm. um, that gives me, again, you know, some fulfilment. Sounds great. And so um, if someone wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Obviously, you need to go buy the book. (laughs) And inside the book, there's a free um, free, uh, design your life program. So... Um, is that the best place to go? Do you have also have? Um... Oh, I've got a couple of websites like uh, inlifecoaching.com.au. Uh, That's my my coaching business. Uh, inlifewellness.com.au. That's my health and fitness business. Um, if you jump onto those contact pages, those messages get to me. Uh, that's probably the best thing I can do, rather than let you know my mobile number. <laughs> um, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Well, the guys will be ringing you out. They actually want to buy anything from you to be trying to scam you like they do on mine. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. No, just you can find me one way or another. Just yeah. Yeah, look up the book, give it a Google. But We'll put a link on the show notes time. as well for the book as well. Yeah. So. Thanks, John. But um, yes, yeah, I think the theme of my life is is support. So I've had plenty and um, I like to give plenty. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, I did a... Yeah, it's about all I'll say on that. But I just think it's a, your duty to support people and it's... It's um it's fine to ask for it as well. Yeah, I don't think you'd be afraid to ask. You'd be surprised when people actually, when you ask for help, they'll actually give it to you. So Happy, yeah, yeah, I talk about that in the book as well, and, and the reason for it. So. Maybe it's all stuffs from the book I've been reading on and off and just on the last yeah, eighteen yeah, months. Maybe. I think I've soaked it as a book up. But, you know, supporting someone else fulfills a need. 
yes. and the, you know, the supporter. So mm. I'm not not an egotistical need, just a you know a deep human a core need. need. I think I think a core, I think human beings at a core do want to help each other. It's a community thing. That's how human society yep. was built anyway. Really cool. Yep. Mm. Cool. Cool. Mm. Cool. So thanks so much, um, and we'll put up the links and everything on the on the site. And I really. Um, look forward to seeing some of the results in the book because I think it's an excellent book and I think it's got a great message and I think um, that's that's where this, the world needs right now is great some great messages. So congratulations on writing it. Yeah, um, thanks for your help, John. So it's been well, a great experience. Same deal here, right? I get to have some benefit from it as well, so everybody gets to do And I think it's a legacy too, so it's there forever. So thanks again for coming on the show. My pleasure, mate. See ya.